Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle here to continue my video series on volume versus efficiency. Now, if you already missed them, there have been three videos prior to this. Running back volume, running back efficiency, and wide receiver volume. Today's video is all about wide receiver efficiency. So when you're done with this video, make sure you go check out those videos as well. But Quick clarification on something. This is not a top performers video. I am not breaking down the top performers at each position. I am breaking down the difference in volume versus efficiency. So if there are some top wide receivers missing from this video, it's on purpose. I have specifically taken guys that were either wide receiver ones on their team last year or potential to be wide receiver one on their team this year. And the reason that I have done that and kind of spread the names out a little bit is because it's going to give us a better view of what different volume could mean for different efficiency. If I just took all the top performers, we would get basically the same outcome for efficiency. Then the video would have absolutely no purpose. So if you're asking me why certain players are missing, that is why. And I hope you can understand that because it's a pretty simple concept. We're not talking about top performers. We're talking about what's the difference between volume and efficiency. So for this video, what are we going to be taking into account? Well, for efficiency statistics, we've got catch percentage, yards per target, yards per reception, yards after the catch per reception, points per snap, and points per touch. So if you had a chance to take a look at the volume video, you're going to see a little bit of a difference here as we go through. And it's very, very interesting to point some of these things out. And again, it is why I purposely did not take the top performers in every single category because I wanted to make sure that we could accurately show you what the difference was with some of these guys. So catch percentage. This is the first statistic that we've taken a look at that uh, that Cooper Cup hasn't led, but he was still darn close. Hunter Renfro led these 20 players in catch percentage last year at 83.1%, followed by Cooper Cup, Jalen Waddell, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Michael Pittman. Look at that, Michael Pittman, 71%. Very cool to see him up that high. Keenan Allen, Brandon Cooks. C.D. Lamb, Debo Samuel, Mike Evans, Justin Jefferson. It's very weird. As we go down the list, it seems like the names get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we get to the bottom, you got Darnell Mooney. But anyway, so interesting to see where the catch percentage lies. Now, the one thing that you have to be very careful with in catch percentage, okay? You can use it as a statistic. Use it as part of your research. But catch percentage also doesn't take into account like off-target throws, So that's another thing that you can take a look at with wide receivers is taking a look at a percentage of catchable targets. Now, I didn't include that in this one because, again, taking different things, catch percentage is the one that I'm using here, but catchable targets is also a very good way to check and see is catch percentage real or it's not because even though DJ Moore had a catch percentage of 59.6, it's not guaranteed that all 100% of his targets last year were actually catchable. And catch percentage doesn't doesn't take that into account. So just remember that when you're using catch percentage. Yards per target. Mike Evans led the way last year. Not, uh, not surprised to see that there. Then A.J. Brown, Jamar Chase coming in at number uh, three. Now, it might be interesting that uh, Jamar Chase's 11.83 yards per target is going to be significantly lower than a couple of the stats that we have coming up. We'll talk about that in a minute. C.D. Lamb, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, Pittman again showing up here in the top 10, Debo Samuel. That's also going to be a name to remember here in just a second. Hunter Renfro, Terry McLaurin, Tyreek Hill, Brandon Cooks, Darnell Mooney, D.K. Metcalf, Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen, D.J. Moore, Jalen Waddell, and Deontay Johnson. Now, we talked about Deontay Johnson in the volume video, right? He was on the thumbnail, spoke about him because when you averaged out all of his volume statistics, he was number three overall. 
And we kind of talked about that a little bit where we said, hey, you know, what happens this year with Deontay Johnson? Does that volume go down a little bit? You know, they've got a little bit of a QB competition, you know, apparently, maybe, never know. Um, They've got some new weapons there. And you've got some guys that could be, you know, breaking out. The Muth, he could be taking a step forward to tight end. Does that hurt Deontay Johnson? There is a very good chance that we see Deontay Johnson's volume fall this year because, again, could be spreading the ball around a little bit more. Deontay Johnson might not be the favorite target of whoever takes over at quarterback. But will his efficiency go up? Because his efficiency isn't very good. Again, here, yards per target, only 6.99 yards per target. For a guy that for a guy that was so high in volume, his efficiency was actually pretty poor. What about yards per reception? Remember just a second ago when I mentioned with Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel, it'd be, you know, you you'd want to keep an eye on them. Their 11.83 yards per target was third for Chase, and 8.55 was ninth for Debo. They're one and two in yards per reception. These two were these two guys were the best last year at the wide receiver position at making something happen after the catch. And again, that will come up again here in just a second. But Debo and Jamar lead the way with an 18.25 and a 17.96 yards per reception. That's absolutely insane. And if you remember, if you've been around Headliner Nation, if you were here last year, I did a video on Debo Samuel, a bounce back or bust video, and I talked about his ability to really take those type of plays that are those intermediate routes or those shallow routes and turn them into big plays. And that was one of the reasons why I was really in on Debo last year and wanting to get him on my roster because a bounce back had to be inevitable because of the way that he was used in that 49ers offense. And the way Ayuk was used is completely different. So people that were worried about Ayuk taking over for Debo, it wasn't going to happen because Debo's different. And they showed us that last year. We were right on the nail with that uh, prediction last year. And you can see it here in the numbers. And again, if you remember me talking about that last year, you can see it even amplified here in the numbers. So absolutely love to see things like this because it really says, hey, What we did last year, it solidifies that it was right. It's always great to see our process solidified. Debo and Jamar coming in very, very high, one and two. Next closest is Austin Jefferson, apparently forgetting a J there. My bad. That's the second time that's happened. My keyboard's having a little bit of an issue. It's kind of going out. I got to get a new keyboard. Every once in a while, I catch, you know, I'll push a letter and it won't type. Probably had that happen. Mike Evans, CeeDee Lamb, AJ Brown. This CeeDee Lamb here at... 13.95 13.95 yards per reception. It was one of the only areas that really C.D. Lamb excelled in last year compared to his peers. You know, some of these efficiency numbers, again, show that C.D. Lamb is an absolute beast after the catch. It just doesn't feel like he was utilized that way. Like, if they could utilize C.D. Lamb in a Debo Samuel-esque role without the carries, you know, we're not going that far with C.D. Lamb, but using him in the slot using him, you know, uh, maybe out of the backfield and some swing routes and things like that. Let's see the Lamb's athleticism take over. Just worry about getting the ball in his hands and then let him do something. I hope Dallas does that a little bit more this year and gets creative with him because he has that type of playmaking ability and they don't do that with him. Um, uh, AJ Brown, for some reason, and I did notice this a couple of minutes ago, AJ Brown, this is a typo. That is 13.79, not 19.79. So I apologize. Two different typos on this slide. Uh, Terry McLaurin, Cooper Cup, Darnell Mooney, DK Metcalf, Devonte Adams, DJ Moore, Michael Pittman, Stefan Diggs, Brandon Cooks, Tyreek Hill, Deontay Johnson, Keenan Allen, Hunter Renfro, Jalen Waddle, the only player to not average double digit yards per reception out of this group here. Uh, again, something else that we've talked about with Jalen Waddle. Volume could go down a little bit, but with having Tyreek there, that could really, really help his efficiency this season. Now, yeah, yards after the catch per reception. Just mentioned it again. Debo and Jamar were two of the best on making, making more out of nothing or taking big plays and turning them into bigger plays. Debo averaged 10.18 yards after the catch per reception last year. Jamar averaged 8.11. And the next closest wide receiver was Cooper Cup at 5. 
0.94. I'm going to take just a short break here to take a quick drink because I want that to marinate with all of you for a second. Just look at those numbers. Let it marinate. <sighs> Did that marinate long enough? Good. It's insane. That is crazy that these two guys did so much. The one thing that I want to see with Debo this year is I want to see the efficiency stay where it is, but I would like to see some of that wide receiver volume become elite type volume. If you watch the wide receiver volume video, you saw that Debo sorely lacked behind his peers in terms of overall volume. Now, part of that was because of the way that he was utilized out of the backfield. So as a wide receiver, we need to see some of that volume come up to help him sustain some of those numbers that we saw last year. I don't expect him to finish as high as he did last year uh, because I don't know if he can replicate some of those running back numbers because, number one, they'll be healthier at the running back position. They won't need to utilize Debo that way. But number two, I don't think he really wants to be utilized that way all the time. He's a playmaker. He's a football player. He wants the ball in his hands. But I think they can get him back out wide a little bit more often and still do some of these things. So I still think he's going to be a top 12 option. I just don't think he's going to be a top two option the way that we saw last year. So again, taking a look here, yards after the catch per reception. And then you go down to the bottom. Some of those big play guys like Stefan Diggs, Mike Evans, A.J. Brown, Brandon Cooks, Michael Pittman. For those, it, that's why you take a look at these numbers and why Jamar Chase is even more impressive because a lot of times with those big play wide receivers, those yards after the catch reception numbers are not going to be as high because they're already getting the ball deep downfield. A lot of times it's one-on-one -on -one coverage and unless they're wide open or they absolutely destroy their coverage and they take the ball to the house, a lot of times their yards after the catch per reception numbers aren't going to be huge because there's just not a whole lot of yards. Those yards after the catch numbers are guys that are taking those kind of intermediate routes and and then turning like an eight yard target into like a 15 yard gain, not necessarily like a 20 yard target into like a 30 yard gain or something like that, if that makes sense. So that's why some of those numbers, that's why it's even more impressive again to see Jamar Chase so high because that's what his role was last year. He was absolutely burning everybody. He was destroying coverage last year. Absolutely insane to see that. Points per snap. Let's talk some fantasy football stats here real quick. Cooper Cup led the way at .43. Not surprised to see that. Then Debo, Devante, Hunter Renfro, top four at .34 uh, points per snap. Then Hill, Chase, Jefferson, Metcalf, Brown in his limited targets last year. Mike Evans, Stephon Diggs, Deontay Johnson, Brandon Cooks, Jalen Waddle, C.D. Lamb, Keenan Allen, Michael Pittman, D.J. Moore, Terry, uh, Darnell Mooney, Terry McLaurin. Something that... Uh, that everybody towards the bottom half has here in common that people towards the top half don't touchdowns, Terry McLaurin, Darnell Mooney, DJ Moore, Michael Pittman, Keenan Allen, CD lamb, Jalen Waddle. All these guys lacked in touchdowns. That's why their points per snap are lower, more touchdowns, more points per snap, especially because you get six points essentially on that snap. So those guys that are scoring more touchdowns are absolutely going to end up higher in points per snap. What about points per touch? Mike Evans led the way there. 14 receiving touchdowns really helps. Jamar Chase right after him. DK Metcalf, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams. Again, guys that were really putting on the touchdowns. A.J. Brown, kind of an outlier there. Kind of an outlier there because um, he didn't have those type of touchdowns. Stephon Diggs, Terry McLaurin, C.D. Lamb, Michael Pittman, Darnell Mooney, Brandon Cooks, Debo Samuel, Tyreek Hill, Deontay Johnson, Hunter Renfro, Keenan Allen, D.J. Moore, Jalen Waddle, Debo Samuel falling a little bit behind. Even though he had all those touchdowns, he had way many more uh, touches last year than what some of these other guys did because of his role out of the backfield. So that's why he is so low there in points per touch. So if we take everything that we talked about here, all of our efficiency stats, throw them together, average them out in terms of efficiency last year, once again, Cooper Cup led the way. Cooper Cup finishes at 3.83. Then Jamar Chase with a 4.6. Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel, Mike Evans. Mike Evans finishing very high in efficiency after finishing on the lower side in volume. That is why, hey, it's good to see these things, right? Because Mike Evans, he finished lower on volume, but he finished much higher in efficiency, right? 
A.J. Brown finished much lower in volume. In fact, he was basically last in every single category, much higher in efficiency. Uh, D.K. Metcalf in volume finished a lot lower. Well, look at where he is now. Okay, and we're going to see the changes here in just a second. But there's one thing. There's there's something here that's really going to play out. And why I utilize different guys throughout the entire video series to make sure you guys could fully understand the difference in volume and efficiency. So the difference from volume to efficiency, the biggest changers, well, the biggest riser was Debo Samuel and volume to efficiency moved up 15 spots, 15 spots. Because again, when you count only his wide receiver volume, he was solely behind his peers. But in terms of efficiency, he moved up 15 spots. A.J. Brown, Lacked in volume, moved up in efficiency. CD Lamb, lacked in volume, moved up in efficiency. I just mentioned it with CD Lamb a couple of minutes ago, right? Same thing with Mike Evans. Same thing with DK Metcalf. These guys made a, made a jump in efficiency with lower volume. Okay, so take a look at the names down at the the below now. Guys with higher volume took a pretty big hit in efficiency. The more touches you have, the more likely it is that your efficiency is going to fall, especially at the wide receiver position, all right? That was a big point to these videos, is to show you that if you're drafting guys with high wide receiver volume or high volume, that doesn't always matter because the efficiency doesn't always come with the volume. So for those fantasy owners out there who like to make the argument, but yeah, he's going to get all the volume in the world. That's what we want. It helps, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to outperform all their peers. They're just going to get more touches, but it doesn't mean that they're going to bring in like fantasy stats or they're going to bring in higher upside fantasy stats. This is, a, this is a big difference here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're noticing the difference here and you're understanding what I'm trying to do with these videos, you're going to be very successful because I'm trying to help you understand what the difference is and why we see these changes and what's going on with the volume and the efficiency. And if a guy has tons of volume, does it necessarily mean that you just need to take him over a guy with high efficiency? Not necessarily because... Even let's say the guy with the lower volume catches up a little bit, but keep some of that higher efficiency. Whoo, baby, you're going to have yourself a guy that's going to, that's going to outperform his ADP by quite a bit. So hopefully all of this made sense. Hopefully all of this so far has helped you in some way, shape or form. And we've got two more videos to come because I still got to talk about tight ends, the football kind. But there's a breakdown on wide receiver efficiency. Hopefully, you all enjoying it. Make sure that you hit that like button for me before we move. Right now, our goal is, is we want to try and get like a 1,000 likes on every single video that we're doing. So make sure you hit that like button for us. Check out the rest of the videos. If you haven't seen the running back volume and efficiency videos and the wide receiver volume video, make sure you go back and you watch those because those are really going to help to, as we go along with this process, understand what we've got going on. So... Go check out that video. Subscribe if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners and leave me a comment down below and kind of give me your thoughts on what you're seeing with the video right now. Is there something that doesn't make sense? Has something kind of clicked for you? Is there something that you're looking at and saying, that's really interesting? Like, I, I didn't know that. Let me know down in the comments below what your kind of thoughts are on this video uh, series right now and if you're enjoying that. But, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you all for tuning in to another video here on the Fantasy Headliners. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out. Analytics off the chain. All the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game. Y'all stuck on third down. Your content's playing change. Headliners on top now. We gonna move and change. Podcast off the rip. Draft guide, so legit. Fantasy world, I game tight. You know we about that chub life. Stuck in a rut, and you need some motivation. Face head to the channel for this headliner nation. I'm a headliner.